up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at again with another New York Giants video. First and foremost, I just gotta say thank you to all you viewers out there, all the subscribers, everybody who supports the channel. Uh, because last night's episode of the Young Gun Podcast, yes, it usually is held on Wednesday, but it was a special episode last night. Um, we had a uh, guest Paul Dottino Juan, of course, we all know him from the WFAN radio from Giants.com, um, from Big Blue Kickoff Live on the Giants channel, a legendary Giants beat reporter that's been doing you know, his job and, and been reporting on team for 39 years now. Anybody who, who tunes into Giants.com and their YouTube channel knows who he is. Any like really, really big Giants fans know who he is. We had him on and it was a great, great episode of the Young Guns podcast. Um, it would not have been pass possible without you guys and you also gave him great questions to filter the conversation with as well. It was it was great. We we talked about a lot of topics. I will say if you didn't catch it, go ahead and you know take a look at the replay right now. And some of the things we even talked about is related to today's video because today the Giants released their unofficial week one depth chart. At least I'm calling it unofficial uh, because I don't know. It's it's still kind of we're still kind of a couple days away. I'm sure it could change by the time we actually get to Sunday versus the Broncos. But they released their first like depth chart of the year for a game. There's a little bit of surprises on there, specifically with the offensive line, which is something that Paul mentioned last night. Not sure if he was hinting at anything or if he was just, you know, actually just going off of what he thought would happen. And of course, yesterday, the Giants also released their team captains. I'll cover that in the latter half of the video. Not much surprises there, but we'll still talk about it a little bit. But let's get straight to the depth chart and first i'm going to read out a quote from joe judge um kind of reflecting what i was saying earlier i'm sure the depth chart can change before we actually get to sunday but as of right now this is what we have and it's certainly going to change from week one of the season all the way to week 18 of the season this is what joe judge said i tell our guys all the time when they come in the depth chart is really blank and as we start practicing and they start putting together things on tape you start filling in names based off of what they're doing that can change every day. It's really just cumulative. It's what you do consistently day in and day out. Some guys may flash one day, some guys may flash another day. But ultimately, you wanna go ahead and measure who's consistently dependable, who's productive for you on the field. They're not written in permanent markers, so at any point, based on who's playing, the best get in that spot. And for a quick view of the offense, defense, and special teams depth chart, this is what it looks like. I'm gonna pop it up on screen now. It would just be too much to read off the entire thing, so I'll just read the starters from top to bottom. Kenny Galladay, Evan Ingram, Nate Solder, Will Hernandez, Nick Gates, Shane Lemieux, Andrew Thomas, Saquon Barkley, Eli Penny, Sterling Shepard, Kyle Rudolph, Daniel Jones. Going over quickly to the defensive side, Lorenzo Carter, Dexter Lawrence, Blake Martinez, Austin Johnson, Tay Crowder, Leonard Williams, O'Shane Zimenez, James Bradbury, Jabril Peppers, Logan Ryan, Adoree Jackson. And finally, quickly to the specialist side, Casey Crater, Riley Dixon, Riley Dixon, Jabril Peppers, CJ Board, Graham Gunnell. Now, I'm gonna switch back to the offensive side, and I'm sure you notice what some people may consider a surprise. Nate Solder is starting at right tackle over Matt Pert. What was I talking about earlier with uh, hinting at the Paul Dottino thing from the podcast last night? We talked about the offensive line a little bit. He mentioned, don't be surprised if Matt Peart is not starting for the Giants week one. Essentially, based off of what we saw during training camp, the preseason, the general offseason altogether, Matt Peart did not show enough to guarantee himself a starting spot as the right tackle for the New York Giants. He didn't really take as big a step as he needed. That's not to say he can't start for the right tackle at the end of the year, but he did not show enough to completely differentiate and space himself, or distance himself I should say, from one Nate Solder, who looked much better after 600 days of inactivity from football. Nate Solder looked much better than uh, the Giants and I guess fans and reporters everybody expected, and you know he hasn't been half bad, they've been playing him in multiple positions as well, even moving him to guard at one point. He's looked okay, you know what I'm saying? I have yet to see him in a game, um, you know, obviously official NFL game. It's still been over 600 days. We'll see how it goes. But from every report that we've read, every account we've heard from multiple different beat writers, Nate Solo looks better than expected. Matt Pert, not to say that he's looked bad or terrible, but he hasn't looked good enough to get that right tackle spot. Once again, I want to emphasize not that he's looked terrible or anything. It's just that they feel more comfortable going with a more experienced guy in Solder, despite the fact that he hasn't played in the past two years over Matt Pert. And that says 
that says a little bit, you know what I'm saying? It says quite a bit. I will say it goes back to Joe Judge's quote. As of right now, Nate Solder, I guess, is the best guy in that spot. And he's also very similar to a guy like Sam Beal that made the roster off of a strong end to his preseason, a strong end to his offseason in general. Nate Solder had a much stronger end to the offseason, to the preseason, and to training camp than Matt Pert had. Rolling up to the season as we got closer and closer to it, Solder has looked better than Pert, and that is what they're going off of. And I can't necessarily blame them. What I will say is that some Giants fans are wondering now if Matt's Pert is done. Like, is he a bust, so to say? Which I always say, never judge them off their first year or their first two years. Give us some time. But no, Matt Pert is not done. We need to remember, he was always a developmental pick. He was always a project player and a project tackle at that. Matt Pert came in. His best asset was his size. He really had to get his technique down and, and show that he could be a starting level right tackle. He was taking the third round for a reason. Once again, project player. I can't think of any project player at any position, really, that sort of broke out in their second year. I'm going to put that out there. And of course, when we narrow it down to project tackle, I can't really can't think of any project tackle that came on in their second year and was like, you know, a pro bowl, all pro guy. And of course, that's not what we were expecting from Matt Pert, but we were expecting him to be a good solid level starter. Am I a bit disappointed? Yes, I am. I can't lie, especially with the amount of faith the coaching staff put in the younger part of the line. That is one thing I will say that seems to be fading a bit, uh, you know, now that we're getting close, close to week one. The fate that they had was always in the young guys. It was not in Nate Solder. Not to say that they ever gave up on him, but it was always the youngest guys. It was always, you know, Shane Lemieux. Uh, Matt Pear, Andrew Thomas, Will Hernandez, Nick Gates, the young crew, the guys that we thought were going to be the starters. And evidently, moving close, closer to the season, it seems like the two question marks on the O-line before the offseason started, which was left guard and right tackle, are still the questions moving into the season. I hope that that doesn't cripple the offense or anything terrible like that. I'm not saying it will, but it's still a concern and that's a little bit worrying. Of course, we got good backups now and Ben Bredesen for that guard position. Billy Price for the center, and now Matt Pert as a backup, I believe is going to be a great backup for us. Hopefully, Nate Solder starting, you know, provides us an edge, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully, it's the better decision, and I will say, just because a person is starting doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get the most snaps. Now, uh, of course, it's just a title at the end of the day, but I do think, much like we had last year, this year, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a rotation at right tackle. We had the Cam Fleming and Matt Pert rotation. Wouldn't be surprised if we have the Nate Solder and Matt Pert rotation here. Maybe it's just a matchup thing. Maybe they feel like Nate Solder is better matched for Von Miller or Bradley Chubb, whoever's going to be coming off his side. I think it's going to be Von Miller. Don't quote me on that. Maybe they say Matt Pert isn't quite equipped to handle one of the better edge rushers in NFL history. Let's give that to Nate Solder. It could be any number of reasons. But, you know, it was definitely a surprise nonetheless. And then when you go back to the defensive side of the ball, the only surprise really I could point out here, I guess, would be O'Shane Zimenez starting over Aziz Ojolari. But is that really a surprise? Same thing as Nate Solder with um, the performance to end out the offseason. O'Shane Zimenez came on really strong towards the end of preseason, the end of training camp, the end of offseason in general. And he was somebody that was already ahead of Aziz technically on the depth chart because he already been here a couple years he was somebody that improved the way he looked he improved the way he played just in general seemed to take a step forward this offseason and he's somebody that's currently ahead of Aziz on the depth chart now I still believe personally Aziz is going to start at some point I wouldn't be surprised if he starts you know week two we'll see what happens I'm not don't quote me but O'Shane being ahead of him shouldn't really be too much of a surprise because he finished strong much like everybody else listed here tay crowder uh, i know carl coughlin finished strong but tay crowder has been super consistent um throughout the entire offseason and of course you guys know i have a lot of faith in him as well cj board at kick returner over jabil over Kadarius. he's been somebody that's been super consistent and definitely for the second half of the offseason came on and finished strong but that's kind of the unofficial depth chart for week one i'm gonna kind of quickly now talk about the captains that were selected we have three new captains it was graham gano nick gates and logan ryan i'm sure nobody's surprised by the logan ryan captaincy badge he certainly earned it 
definitely a leader on his team. I would say probably the most well-known leader of this team. Him and Jabril Peppers are right up there. Came in last offseason, really helped with that culture change, really helped as a great veteran presence in the locker room. Somebody that the guys could go to, learn from, somebody that speaks very highly of the coaches, the Giants, the program in general. It was no surprise that Logan Ryan got it. He even gave himself uh, the nickname, the People's Captain. And I would kind of agree with that. Nick Gates is a little bit of another surprise um, at the center position. If there was anybody on the O-line that would have gone in, I thought it might have been Solder again. Solder was once a captain, I think, in 2018 for us and 2019. But he's a young guy that came on in his first season as a center, did a good job, played all 16 games. He's right there with the quarterback. We know him as Nasty Nick Gates, one of the more aggressive players on the team. I'd say he earned it as well. And of course, Graham Gano, I mean, as a special teams captain, that's a no-brainer. That's completely a no-brainer. The guy last year had one of the best kicking seasons in the NFL. It is what it is. But other than that, all repeat captains. And there's not much for me to say about this other than I think everybody that got it deserves it. And it's nice to see Logan Ryan get that badge. But of course, the main story of today of this video was the depth chart. You guys let me know what you think. Put your thoughts and comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.